So the veterinarian's need is, well, and that's changed, right? It's right. changed just in the past week or two. Which is crazy. Um, yeah, so what we, we try to do is help veterinarians free up their exam room mm -hmm. by moving as many cases to remote care as possible. So if, and, and what we find in veterinary practices that are successful, they're short on doctors, they're short on staff, they're short on exam rooms. Mm -hmm. And so if we can take cases and say, that's just a recheck on a suture line, that can be done by, depending on the protocol of your practice, either a veterinary assistant or a credentialed veterinary nurse, right? Mm -hmm. So that can be done remotely. So let's move that to remote on our two-way messaging platform mm -hmm. um, and allow that case to be managed there and not tie up an exam room. So the now pet parent can just take a picture of take the a suture picture. line. Yeah. I'm Jamie O'Kane, CPA, small business advanced tax planning and compliance extraordinaire. And this is the Abundant Beans Podcast, the podcast that takes my love for learning what makes people tick while digging into the good, bad, and ugly of small business ownership. We strive to give you the insight that only those in the trenches of being and working with entrepreneurs can provide. It's funny what happens when you say yes to stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. I was just like, here's the thing. And you're like, I'm not sure how that's going to work, but okay. I, I find it interesting how different people work from home, but also how different organizations, you know, we were kind of talked about like, you know, see work from home, Yeah. but there are definitely, you know, these hands-on, you know, like medical and, you know, we work with the veterinarians and dentists, like, yeah. what are they supposed to do? You yeah. know, a lot home. of our veterinarians have shifted. Like they've, you know, they're doing telemedicine because that's yep. probably what was coming up next anyway. Um, you know, and I've talked to, you know, other practitioners and stuff where I'm just like, just get it all pre-scheduled. Maybe yep. you can get some of them even prepay. Like we need to figure out what we're going to do on the back end here to make sure everybody's good. So, so what are some of the, um, that you're seeing, what are the, some of the things that you see that are the biggest factors that drive hospital success? a clear understanding of what the owner wants out of it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I kind of was talking about that one hospital in Nebraska, and that was kind of the springboard for me, eventually transitioned out of, of AHA, was able to partner in a few more hospitals. And the reason I mentioned that is because not all hospital owners want the same thing. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's one of the, the key pieces of success. So as I was able to partner in a few privately owned hospitals, uh, you know, banks, banks really owning the hospital, we just had our names on the papers. Uh, but, but you get to meet different people and you find out that we get into ownership for different reasons. For some, it is the financial security. Mm -hmm. For some, it is that ability to build their own lifestyle. Mm -hmm. For some, they practice in other hospitals and weren't happy with that level of medicine. And so they got into ownership because they want to practice their definition of, of gold standard. You know, more and more, there's a, the cultural piece of it. You know, an owner, uh, a new owner doesn't want to repeat maybe what they've seen in some other hospitals from a staffing perspective. And so they want to build their own culture. But until we as owners have a clear idea of why we're doing this and what success looks like, I don't think you can have a successful hospital because you end up doing what so many entrepreneurs do. And I know this is true across all, all different industries. Mm -hmm. You do nothing but work in the business. And as you know, as a successful business owner, yeah, that's part of it. But if, if mm -hmm. no one works on the business, after a while, uh, the wheels fall off. And I think that's what's yeah. happened a lot in our profession is you get into it they're passionate about being a technician, not a veterinary technician, but a technician on the, on the veterinary mm -hmm. side. And they don't work on the business. And so they don't ever accomplish why they got into it because they just get into this. I got to keep my head down, power mm -hmm. through every day, see patients. And, and they look up 20 years later and the hospital is in the same spot or a lot of times worse off than it was when they started. So what are some of the opportunities that vet practices um, have now that you didn't have when you had your, when you had your practice? Um, I think, again, as we were talking, mm -hmm. an awareness of the importance of culture mm -hmm. um, would be one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that there are a lot of resources that are available now that weren't available. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that there are great studies that show this is how we need to, we need to be relating with our clients in a relational manner, not a transactional manner. Uh, Man. Uh, manner. And we need to, to be couching things in terms of the benefits to the clients and the patients mm -hmm. and not in terms of tangibles. Well, I had to go to school to learn this, or I had to buy this expensive piece of equipment, mm -hmm. or I need to have two people help me do this surgery. So it's going to be more expensive. Mm -hmm. You as an owner could care less. Mm -hmm. But if I said to you, 
if we do the surgery, there's a really good chance that Fluffy will have a great quality of life for a long time to come. That's what you want to know. Mm -hmm. I can't put numbers to it. Yeah. But this is what this diagnostic will tell us. Mm -hmm. Having this diagnostic will help us to chart the course of what we need to do to mm -hmm. keep Fluffy with you as long as we possibly can. Yeah. So couching in terms of what's important. All of this communications training. That did not exist when I was in school. Right. That did not exist. Uh, it did uh, probably maybe in the mid 2000s mm -hmm. start coming into vogue. Mm -hmm. And Colorado State has a great communications training. But I also realized that this is not my default behavior. <laughs> <laughs> my default behavior is not to be out in the world like this. And so I have to build in time to, to recover. Yeah. Or like yeah. ways to take care of myself so I can continue to do this. I love it, but it still takes my energy and it can be both. Yeah, it can be both. It can be both. Um, but I, you know, I give this podcast my energy because I love doing it, but that doesn't mean it's the best energy, you know, the best, you know, the easiest way for me to expend energy because it's not, yeah. you know, I love talking to people. I love getting to know their stories. I love putting this out into the world for the, for people, but that, that doesn't mean I'm hopping up, hopping up on Twitter and I'm going to go do some lives. Like it's just not going to happen. I know somebody I, for the longest time, um, you know, we kept talking about TikTok. You need to be on TikTok, you know, start TikTok. I literally yeah. downloaded TikTok, watched a couple of things. And I was like, I can't, what, yeah. what no, <laughs> <laughs> I podcast. This is what yeah. I do. It's just the, this is the thing. This yeah. is it. Pick I think it's, it, you've got to know what you do, but I, then it, I also think, you know, you need to be willing to experiment a little bit to discover oh, totally. if, if there's something out there for you. So it's like, exactly being willing to at least download TikTok, check it out, yeah. feel out the water a little bit before, you know, if, if it's a full, you know, no, go with that. Like <laughs> yeah. you don't have to like really twist your arm 17 times to make yourself do it. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Be sure to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or wherever you prefer to listen. If you learned something and found some useful information to apply to your business today, please consider giving us a thumbs up and a review. Until next week, be abundant.